Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.8. We're going to introduce mixed numbers. Now, in a previous section, we had the example of pizzas. If we purchase two pizzas, and we divide the pizzas into four pieces for each pizza, and in that example, uh, six of the pieces were eaten. So if we think about this, the, this, these two circles will represent our pizzas. And we can see they're divided into four equal pieces. And if we consume six of them, well, our pizzas are divided into four pieces. So there are four pieces per pizza. And we consume six of them. So if we asked how many were consumed, we had six quarters of pizza were eaten. Well, this is an improper fraction. And we've seen these improper fractions before. So let's actually move back to this board for a moment here. And we're going to look at the 6 fourth. To write it as an improper fraction, the first thing we want to do is actually do the division. We have the numerator of 6 being divided by 4. So 6 is being divided by 4. Well, 4 goes into 6 one time. And we do that subtraction, and we get 2. Well, this 2, since there's no value to bring down, is my remainder. So I can put it as r2. Now, that's what we learned when we dealt with uh, division and dealing with remainders. And we had talked a little bit about uh, the division algorithm. And I know that's a fancy term. But essentially, what it says is take the quotient and put the remainder over the divisor. Well, that's a little bit of terminology. Our quotient was 1. This is our quotient. And our remainder, we put over our divisor. What we divided by is our divisor. So I can rewrite this to be 1 with a remainder of 2 over the divisor. So I have 1 and 2 fourths. So if we look at this, we can say, hey, we can reduce this piece of the fraction. 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half, 1 over 2. So I have 1 and 2 fourths, which is 1 and 1 half. Notice I didn't do anything to that whole number, the quotient part. Just reduce the fraction. So that's how we work with numbers to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Let's go back to this one here. This is going to be an example for you. I have three triangles. Each of them are divided into three sections, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven sections. I want you to write this as an improper fraction and then convert it to a mixed number, just as we did for 6 fourths. All right, let's take a look at a few more examples. Here we have 59 sevenths. Well, <clears throat> to do this, to write it as a quotient and the remainder over the divisor, we could do the division. But I'm going to show you a shorthand way. One way to do it is to just think what we did here, what times 4 gets me close to 6? Well, 1 without going over. What times 7 will get me close to 59 without going over? Well, 7 goes into 59 8 times. So I know that my whole number is 8. Well, 8 times 7 is 56. And then I just find their difference, just like I found the difference here. 59 minus 56 is 3. So I have 8 and 3 sevenths. Now notice, I'm not showing any work here. We're doing it as mental math. But if that's a little bit troublesome for you at first, you need some more practice before you get to that. Maybe you need to review your times tables. Definitely do the division. 59 divided by 7, just like we did there. 7 goes into 59 8 times. We find that difference to be 3. That's our remainder. So we rewrite it as 8 and the remainder over the divisor, 8 and 3 sevenths. So you can do it both ways. The more you do it, the quicker you'll be able to move to this method. Now, 6 goes into 71. We'll do this this way. 6 goes into 7 one time. So we find that difference. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 1. 6 goes into 11 just one time. And we subtract that, and we get 5. We could write it as that remainder. But our quotient here says we're going to take the remainder over the divisor. So I have 6 
and 5, my remainder, over the divisor, 5, 6. So now we have the mixed number 6 and 5, 6. This one here, I'm going to let you attempt that one on your own. And uh, always remember to reduce. That's my hint for this one. All right, so we're going to move over to here. And we're going to say, well, what if we have a mixed number to start with, and we want to go back to an improper fraction? Well, if we recall what we did before, we did division and then added the remainder over the divisor. Well, here we work that backwards. Instead of division, we're going to use multiplication. We're going to multiply the 7, which was our quotient, times the divisor and add it to the remainder. So one way to rewrite this is to take the whole number times the, the divisor and add the remainder. And one way to do it uh, with an illustration is we're going to say 7 times 5 and then add the 4. So 7 times 5 is 35. And using order of operations, we would do multiplication before addition. 35 plus 4 is 39. And now we have to put it over the divisor. Because we haven't changed its value, there was still division here. And we didn't do any division, so we have to have division here. 39 over a divisor of 5, 39 fifths. So 7 times 5 plus 4 is 39 over that 5. So this 7 and 4 fifths is equivalent to 39 fifths. Let's look at this one here. We're, I'm going to. Use this method right here. 3 times 9 is 27, plus the remainder is going to give me 35 over the divisor of 9, 35 nines. And I can check my work by actually doing that division. 9 goes into 35 three times with a remainder of 8. It goes in three whole times with a remainder of 8 remains to be divided by 9. 35 nines. This one here, I want you to try yourself. Just recall, 11 times 4 plus the numerator, that remainder. All right, let's look at this example here. And this is where it's very important, especially when taking a quiz or a test in any class, is to always read the directions. Because we don't want to go down a path that isn't called for. This asks us to reduce the improper fraction to lowest terms. It doesn't say anything about writing it as a mixed number. It just says reduce the improper fraction. So I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction, and I'm going to reduce it. Now, these numbers are relatively large compared to the examples we've seen. And I could do the division, but I'm going to use a tool that we learned in a previous section. I'm going to use prime factorization. 18, I know, is 9 times 2. And I know 9 is 3 times 3. So this denominator is 3 times 3 times 2. Or I could write it as 3 squared times 2. And 246. Well, that's a larger number. So I'm just going to take it down a little piece at a time. And I'm going to do a reverse factor tree. It's just going to be upside down. 2 goes into this once, twice, three times. This number here. Maybe I test for divisibility, and I say 3 and 2 and 1 is a total of 6. 6 is divisible by 3, so this number is divisible by 3. And we can see that would hold true here. This would be 12. 12 is divisible by 3. So let's divide this by 3. 3 doesn't go into 1, but it does go into 12 four times with no remainder. 3 goes into 3 once. So now I'm going to rewrite this, 41. Uh, yeah, that's prime. So we have 2 times 3 times 41. Now that I've written it as its prime factorization, I can reduce. Any number divided by itself is 1. So this 2 reduces that 2. And this 3 can reduce only one of these 3's. And if we look at what's left, we have 41 over 3. Now, if I wanted to, I could do that division and write it as a mixed number. But the directions did not tell me to do so. So 41 thirds is my improper fraction in lowest terms. I reduced it. 
Why don't you try this one on your own? Just reduce it. Use prime factorization or division. But I think prime factorization will make it a little bit easier uh, than that division. So this has been section 2.8, Introduction to Mixed Numbers. Thank you for watching.